Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is uh, James O'Farrell from uh, Solid Experts. Uh, I'm the uh, head of additive uh, manufacturing uh, here at uh, Solid Experts. So we just want to welcome everybody that's uh, that's uh, attending this uh, presentation today. And uh, we have uh, the pleasure of having John Nolan with me as well, who's uh, our senior applica application engineer here at Solid Experts. Uh, so he will be uh, going into uh, details with you guys in terms of uh, our presentation regarding the uh, Metal X uh, uh, copper presentation. So just to, uh, before we uh, get uh, started into the presentation, a bit about uh, solid experts as a uh, as an added value uh, reseller. Uh, essentially, solid experts has been uh, was founded in uh, 1998. Uh, we have a large team here of uh, combined with uh, consultants, uh, application specialists, uh, salespeople, and just uh, just an overall great team of engineers as well to kind of service you. Um, whether it's on the design side or on the additive manufacturing side. Uh, we have offices that are located in Montreal, Quebec City, and Nashua, and uh, now we've expanded as well into uh, Ontario. Um, so we're expanding more and more in the east, uh, eastern Canada. Uh, we're 100% uh, dedicated to uh, 3D uh, design solutions. Uh, our team holds over uh, 250 technical certifications and uh, we have over uh, 3,800 uh, satisfied customers uh, with solid experts. Um, so um, just a bit about a, an added value here at solid experts uh, when it comes to uh, today we're going to be talking more about 3D printing but as a um, as a, uh, as a as a reseller for solid uh, SolidWorks as well, we can really uh, bring the uh, design to part, design to manufacturing uh, back to life. So uh, when it comes to our team that's experienced with SolidWorks and now the uh, 3D experience, uh, these are these are things that we can bring as an added value in terms of uh, uh, providing uh, great insight in terms of uh, providing parts that will be optimal uh, for you on the 3D printing side due to uh, uh, industry experience like John Nolan. So um, from there, um, I will pass on the, the ball to uh, John Nolan. And uh, by the way, if you see any value in this presentation today, feel free to uh, reach out. We can do a more customized uh, presentation. And as well, uh, if you're looking to go a little bit more in depth, we do provide sample parts and we are able to kind of qu quantify the uh, bill of materials, the time, and see if this is a uh, solution that could fit uh, the needs of your uh, of your company. So thank you for attending. And uh, John, I'm going to pass it on to you, and you can take it from there. Very good. Thank you, James. Um, for those who aren't familiar with me, I'm John Nolan. I'm the senior applications engineer. I have been in the design realm and CAD realm for <clears throat> multiple decades. Um, I go all the way back to doing my first CAD work in 1985. Um, but currently, Mark Forge started themselves in 2014 uh, and released the Mark I. And it was one of the first FDM printers to do a continuous fiber reinforcement. Um, and they actually started with carbon fiber. Um, they've since added fiberglass, high strength fiberglass, Kevlar, um, and now they've uh, even progressed further into um, metal printing systems that we're talking about today. Interestingly enough, um, the founder, Greg Mark, is a um, MIT graduate in composites engineering, and he originally built the first machine to um, make parts for one of his other companies that does uh, performance accessories for high-end sports cars. And um, you can actually see the original machine at their headquarters in Watertown, Mass. The product we're most interested in for this webinar is the Metal X system. This has been out for a few years and it does a variety of alloys. Started off with stainless steels and tool steels and more recently has added Inconel and copper. Um, it can be used to quickly produce solid metal parts for tooling, 
um, low production, uh, low volume production runs, um, specific prototypes and custom fit. And that's part of what we're gonna talk about today with the uh, custom copper heat sinks. The Metal X printer is, um, sits on a desktop much like any other FDM type machine. Um, it is a um, FDM type process. The um, metal powder is encased in a combination of, of wax and resins, uh, and, but is developed or, or uh, printed from a spool like regular um, FDM filaments. Um, and then we'll see that it is in fact uh, centered down to be the solid metal part. The process is actually um, similar or materials are similar to what's used in the MIM process now. If you have a uh, current generation smartphone, the lightning adapter or USB-C uh, adapter in your phone uh, is generally made with a MIM process, metal injection molding. Um, for the Metal X process, they call it ATOM, Atomic Diffusion Additive Manufacturing. Um, the printing process is just the first step of it. From there, the part is removed from the printer and goes into a separate washing station. This is a uh, solvent-based vapor degreaser station, something similar to what you would see in high-end aerospace manufacturing or medical product manufacturing. And then from there, after it's dried from the washer, uh, it goes into a full sintering oven. And Mark Forged has in fact built their own oven specialty purpose for this uh, process and, and platform. The um, ovens are much smaller than the MIMS ovens that you would otherwise need to buy. Um, and they can have better control of them uh, through the Iger software that we'll see. When a metal part is printed initially in the Metal X printer, um, again, the geometry is a little bit swollen, roughly 20, 21%, depending on the alloy. And again, it's a mix of metal powder, um, little bits of wax to kind of bind things together and a bit of polymer that helps it go through the extruder process in the nozzle of the Metal X printer. After it's been through the washing station, most of the wax is, is all but gone. A little bit of the plastic polymer remains. And this is what we call a brown state part. Um, this is somewhat fragile. However, you can finish it lightly with sanding or um, you know, some sort of grit abrasive process to get a really fine finish uh, on the parts. And then after the sintering, the part shrinks a little bit and um, becomes the fully dense part. Now the solid metal density of the Mark Forge parts when finished with the sintering process is on the order of 95, 96% uh, of that of the solid ingot that you would buy otherwise. Um, now, the Iger software processes that shrink rate for you, depending on the part geometry and the alloy, and uh, you just load up your normal um, tolerance STL file. You don't have to adjust it at all. The software uh, that does the slicing handles all that for you. Um, again, you produce it in the standard size. You export it from your 3D CAD package, SolidWorks or otherwise. Um, it prints slightly larger for you automatically. The chamber and the bed of the printing machine are heated uh, to help with the process. From there, you remove it, wash it, and center it to get the as designed size. The rough tolerance on these are, are depending on the alloy and in the uh, print volume, uh, roughly five thousandths of an inch plus or minus. Um, again, depending on the part and geometry. Now, what we're particularly talking about today is the ability to print in pure copper. Um, Mark Forge is the only desktop metal printing solution right now doing a pure copper alloy. Um, it has full thermal and electrical conductivity, uh, similar to standard uh, wrought copper. Um, and it's at a price point such that it's actually can be economical depending on the geometry uh, 
to print it rather than machine it in some cases. Mark Forge, by the way, is all Massachusetts sourced. Um, the engineering and software production is all in Massachusetts. The material production is actually under their control also in Massachusetts. And all of the um, part and assembly production is subcontracted out with various manufacturers uh, throughout the state of Massachusetts. Now, in this case, I happened to have a um, little thermal study uh, built in SolidWorks, and this was normally part of a thermal simulation um, test bed. And it happened to have a standard type heatsink, um, such that you would have on a um, CPU processor and so forth. And you can buy these aluminum extrusions in you know various lengths and cut them down to size and, and make a heat sink. Now, what I did is I then substituted one of the Mark Forged promo pieces that's roughly the same size and um, ran a thermal study both ways. Now, in the normal um, fan convection case, there is a three degree difference um, with the custom printed heat sink versus the you know stock aluminum piece that you would saw to size or or what have you. However, what's interesting in notice that the um, printed heat sink is a little bit taller. Um, it's got you know a good deal more uh, vertical faces and at multiple orientations versus just the standard you know straight fin type heat sink that you're used to seeing. And where that all helps to come into play is should the fan of the electronics um, enclosure fail, now you're left to just natural convection. And here in particular, we get a significant difference in the ability for the uh, custom printed heat sink to dissipate the heat um, naturally by nature of the amount of surface area uh, able to exposed to be exposed in the general vicinity. Now I'm going to play a little video uh, that quickly goes through the printing process here. And we go from a washing station to installed. And again, an engineer can do this for themselves in a matter of days. Um, you don't need to subcontract out the manufacturer, send it out for production, get it back, inspect it, all that stuff. Um, you can go from, from part design to printed part and uh, usable part ready to be installed um, in just a few days. The copper is 99.8% pure. 1% um, of that is oxygen and iron, and then the 0.1%. Uh, Another 0.1% is um, the other constituents left over from the printing process. And interestingly, the copper, we've been meeting the ASTM standards for uh, commercially pure, all the Mark Forged Metal X alloys uh, fully meet the ASTM standards, standards for the alloys after the sintering process. Um, even the steels and so forth, uh, particularly the tool steels, all meet the, the full ASTM uh, qualifications for their respective alloys. And part of the way that that's capable is through their printing process. Now, again, we've got our parts um, designed and printed just in DSAs. I happen to design in SOLIDWORKS, and thus I can also render in our visualized software uh, with the copper finish and so forth. Now, the, um, in the Iger software, I'll bring that up. We have our printed heat sink that we uploaded as an STL file. Um, actually, I'll switch to the other view here. And here we've set the alloy for copper. In my case, I'm running on a center one. There are two 
uh, different size sinker ovens with different capacities uh, produced by Mark Forged. And I'm running it in a course on the metal edge printer. For our settings, we can adjust our part sizes and scalings and so forth. We can use the uh, support structures. Um, and we also have some ability to adjust the infill settings. Um, we can adjust the amount of walls. You can, in fact, go full solid um, on some of the metals. Or on the flip side, we can actually go with exposed infill uh, for particular applications. All right. So we can print a more uh, blocky type shape and then um, have the infill not sealed at the top, exposed, showing the triangular infill. Now, here already we have our print time estimates and our wash times, uh, even prescribes the drying time and so forth. And basically our, our material and processing cost uh, is all estimated for you here in the software. We can take a look at the internal view of a metal part. When a metal X part prints, there is a support raft structure. This helps with the dimensional stability through the centering process and evens out the shrinkage rate in the X and Y planes. And then as we move up through the part, here we see a little bit of infill. This is a triangular infill that we're talking about. And then further up through the part, we can see the actual layer by layer slicing of where the printhead is actually going to trace the outline of the profile. And here, a little bit of the infill in the centers of our um, heat exchanger posts, our heat sink posts. The other nice thing about the MicroForge software is I can monitor um, all our printers. And this is a global account on um, the Iger platform. And I can, in fact, monitor printers in all our offices, not just here in Nashua, but I can see the furnaces in Montreal, uh, printers in Toronto and Quebec City, as well as my own. Um, I can look at all the past print job history. I can uh, view all the parts that I've printed recently or my associates have printed. And I can filter on any of those for, in this case, our copper alloy and see what has been printed um, with copper in the last several days to weeks to months. Um, and there is a full dashboarding uh, uh, application and so forth that we can review the data for how much material we've been using, how much print time, all that sort of stuff. Again, the nice thing about being able to print your part is you do have not more freedom to tailor the geometry to fit the situation. Um, here I've actually added some heat spreaders for some of the high energy capacitors in the back of this device and so forth. Um, and you can get much more variety than you can commercially buy otherwise um, without having to go to some sort of specialty machine house. Uh, particularly um, which may be difficult or, or charge a significant uh, increase in, in, in cost uh, to get you your very thin features like this. Again, being a pure or nearly pure um, copper alloy, it has the full electrical properties of solid copper as well. Uh, we do have customers looking at this for the electrical bus bar uh, type application is shown here. Um, one of the other applications that's come along is spot welding. And uh, this is a, um, a promo case with a customer that Mark Forged has worked with uh, over the past year since they released this material. Um, on the left-hand side is our standard machine spot welding shank. Here's the equivalent printed in, in solid copper now for such a large piece that's a fairly expensive operation, but you can see it's been polished and so forth after the fact. What's interesting is the performance uh, as far as the electrical um, properties of the piece is slightly better for the printed 
copper spot welding shank versus the machined one. Um, that may be in part due to the, to the purity of the alloy that Mark Forge has been able to produce and use. Um, it may be to the, the processing of the material. When I worked in, in aerospace for, for eight years, um, you know, it was one of the things that all our machine parts and stuff had to have certified alloys and not all the metals that you buy today are fully certified as to, you know, meeting impurity requirements and so forth. Um, so in this case, yeah, the uh, printed parts perform slightly better, particularly over time uh, as the number of welds increases. Now, eventually even the, the printed one does break down, but again, you simply print another copy or print the next copy while you're using the first one. Um, part of what gives the material properties that the Metal X platform can do is the way that Mark Forge has been able to produce their center ovens. Um, it is a unique uh, alloy that's in the, the chamber of the centering oven. Um, and this helps guarantee the purity of the centered parts. There is also a um, an argon gas purge that occurs during the sintering process. And the sintering, depending on the alloy and the, and the, the level that you're running, is a 23 to 27 hour process um, to complete, but is fully automated for you in the IDER software. You basically set it up and tell it to run um, with the door latched, of course, and it will um, control the process entirely by itself. The Center 2 is a slightly larger version of the oven, and this is the one that we're installing most often right now. Um, again, it has the same canthal tube for a heating chamber, and it is a, of a volume that's uh, large enough to uh, do nearly the, the full print volume of the, uh, the Metal X printer itself. Um, and in either you can do large parts or rather than in the arrangement here, we actually have a double decker um, center plate arrangement and you can stack up batches of parts, uh, you know, a dozen or more at a time, depending on size. Some interesting use cases of where the Metal X printers have been uh, applied over the past few years since uh, 2017 and beyond. Um, Dixon Valve was an early adopter of Mark Forge technology. They started out with the um, the Onyx machines that you've seen previously, and um, their product is a um, an industrial valve type uh, um, variety, all sorts of petrochemical valves and elbows and that sort of thing. And what they were finding is with the 3D printed grippers in the in the plastic. They were holding up well when grabbing the outside of the parts, but on the few parts where they had to grab by the inside where the threads were, um, they were getting worn and, and gouged and so forth. So they actually experimented with um, applying the metal jaws and uh, that solved the problem completely. Um, they've had a number of projects where they've saved um, more than 30% of the manu manufacturing costs each time they've done a, a, a Mark Forge implementation for a particular process. Um, another interesting use case, Stanley Black & Decker. Um, this is a hydraulic hammer. Um, when you see road crews putting up signs at the side of the road and stuff, this is one of the devices they use. It's a fairly um, expensive tool and it's a fairly low volume item. Um, you know, there's only 50 state DOTs in the country, so they only buy so many tools. Um, and so this was a rather expensive cast piece for them uh, where they were having problems with, you know, minimum casting run orders and this, that sort of thing. Uh, and this is one of the first test cases of the Metal X printing series. So they designed it to be optimal for 3D printing and, um, you know, significant uh, time and material savings. Uh, versus the cast units. Um, other interesting use cases, uh, 
Nikia built a um, metal processing uh, type furnace system. And uh, yeah, they they use the, the Inconel holders uh, in their heating. And it's one of the only materials that stand up to the heating process that they're using. Um, Shugla Medical, um, these are the people that perhaps you don't want to ever have uh, here. They um, do the tools and stuff that put in bone screws and they make the bone screws themselves and bone plates and things like that. Um, the screws and stuff, they don't process with Metal X yet because they're not fully certified on that. Um, but the installation tools and stuff uh, are actually designed um, for additive and uh, printed on Metal X printers now. Um, we have a good deal of customers. Not all of these use Metal X. Um, lots of firms in a vari wide variety of industries applying both SOLIDWORKS and MarkForge printing uh, to different designs and so forth. Um, I like to do, you know, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. You know, well, one of the biggest problems they had was the mixing nozzles. Every time a new flavor comes into the plant, uh, these two manufacturing engineers have to redevelop the mixing nozzles. And so basically what they do is they design them in SOLIDWORKS now and print them on Mark Forge printers uh, and so forth. And then way, way up in, in far northern Vermont where it's lots of cold and lots of dairy cows. Um, and then we've got you know L3 and uh, Wirebelt and other firms that uh, that do other projects. Um, as James noted earlier, we have thousands of, of users and customers all throughout the Northeast. Uh, we cover the territory pretty much um, from the, the far Canadian Maritimes all through New England. Uh, Quebec province, now we're expanding into Ontario, New York, and so forth. Um, and particularly on the Mark Forge stuff, we can represent uh, beyond that. Dozens of universities and, and colleges have adapted both SOLIDWORKS and Mark Forged. Um, we work ex uh, quite well with uh, UMass. Um, we're also involved with uh, Vermont Tech Technical Institutes and so forth. Um, several universities up in, in the Quebec province area um, and throughout the, the country. This was just a quick introduction of the, uh, the Metal X printing, uh, particularly related to the copper. All right. Um, we do provide the composite printers as well. We also have a few other brands of printers. If you have specific needs, uh, you can inquire with James afterwards. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unmute you all um, such that you can ask questions if you wish. I have actually one question. Are you able to hear me? Now I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just uh, I had a question uh, regarding the infill because uh, you, you mentioned earlier that you could use let's say 100% infill or 3 uh, percent infill. I, I know I know the standard and usually even home see even home uh, 3D printers and stuff is usually 30 uh, 30 to 40 percent. If you use the uh, let's say 30 percent option because it, it'll infill the insides in air basically, which we don't want in mm -hmm. in, uh, in in a heat sink. Is it possible to have uh, let's say the whole thing mesh. So, so I, 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 like I'll give you an example. So, let's say you wanted the the heat sink you had on the previous screen, and um, in uh, you can, you can like, do full solid with the metals. It's yeah, going to take a, longer. Yeah, so, so, something, you can, so you could do full solid. But let's say you wanted a mesh just for it to just, like 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 I like just to make like a rough draft like real quick. Would you be able to do it with full mesh? So even the outside is mesh. Yeah, that that's what the exposed infill does. Okay. Is it basically uh, leaves particularly the top layer, but on the composite, you can leave almost all the walls open pretty okay. much. <laughs> um, yeah. And so what you're looking at is is basically all infill. Um, you, you know, the, um, you know, the cardboard uh, packing material almost looks like egg carton material. Yeah. yeah. Right. You can get your electronics shipped that way and things like that. Um, it's pulp paper, you know, packaging. 
And there are a few manufacturers of, of the tooling that makes that, um, that are experimenting with the uh, entire um, exposed infill pieces as their, their forms for making the, uh, the molds, you know? Okay. Normally what they would do with those is they would, um, um, you know, machine aluminum or, or machine like a Delrin, hand drill it with a bunch of holes and then they stretch a, a metal screen over it to make the form tool. And uh, okay. they're very much looking to, to replace that uh, with the uh, printed and exposed infill pieces. Yeah, anytime you go to like uh, Tim Hortons or Dunks, you know, the, the drink tray, right? It's that same sort yeah. of material. Okay. Hmm. Now, on some of the metal alloys, you don't have as much infill choices as we do on the composite pieces. On the composite, we can even, you know, switch it up with rectangular or hexagon infill. You can dial the density way, way down if you want to and so forth. A little less flexibility in the metal because they're trying to um, improve on the on the centering stability of it. Um, they do find they have to set some practical limits on that. Anything else? Um, that was it for me. Okay. If you'd like to see more on the Mark Forge and stuff, we do, um, you know, do virtual and, and in-person demos and so forth. Um, we just had last week actually a, a series of demo days here in the office. Um, James can arrange them up in, in the Quebec province area. Um, and of course, there's all sorts of resources online um, relative to Mark Forged and so forth. It is actually just like SolidWorks, a very active um, you know, Facebook group and, and that sort of thing. Um, a lot of their material on their website, um, they have blogs and other articles that you can take advantage of. Um, and you can, in fact, if you were interested, you can start a um, Iger test drive account and basically just an email and a password. And you can load up STL files and, and slice them and, and see what it would cost to actually produce some of your pieces in a um, in a Metal X or even a composite microforged printer. The Iger software is the same uh, for all the printers. Um, so once you, you learn it and get comfortable with it, um, you can apply it to whichever printer you end up working with in the end. So, uh, so John, uh, is there is there uh, anything else you, you you would like to add to to this presentation, or does this uh, summarize uh, the grand does the the grand scheme of uh, of the Metal X for today? Yeah, that's that's the majority of it. Um, there are applications where this could come into play. Uh, we've got customers who are in the uh, the thermal spray type businesses and so forth who are looking at, um, you know, adapting um, to a 3D printed type nozzle instead of their normal machined ones, um, give them the ability to uh, prototype new spray patterns and so forth easier than it would be to, uh, you know, machine those things and, and, and dial that in. Um, so there's a number of applications coming forward so, and uh, based off of some of the trials that we've done, because we've worked closely with some of our, our clients right now with the uh, copper print, uh, uh, based off of what you've seen so far, I mean, what's the biggest takeaway of, of the copper material that you've seen with some of these parts that we've, uh, that we've sent to some of our clients? Because we do offer the service, uh, a lot of clients will either do evaluation parts with us or they will uh, outsource some runs just to kind of get familiar with designing uh, metal printing parts uh, versus machining and then kind of do the outsourcing uh, with us to, to kind of go through that trial. Um, so 
what would you say is some of the biggest takeaways from the, the parts that we've uh, we've done so far for some of our our client base? Um, one of the things is like you saw with the spot sh uh, welding shanks, if the con conductivity for the pure alloy is every bit as good as you can get, if not better than than wrought copper. Um, and that that's a big point for for somebody like that industry or or um, EDM sinker electrodes and and things of that nature where the the, the um, electrical conductivity is is very very important. Okay, yeah, no, absolutely. So I mean, for for anyone that's that's attended today, um, I mean, if you have you know further questions, you can always reach out to to John directly or myself or at uh, info uh, solid experience uh, dot com. Um, right now we've, uh, we, like, uh, like we did, we re where I reiterate in the beginning, um, we're a design firm, but we also sell, uh, additive manufacturing solutions. So we have the best uh, combination of both worlds. Uh, we have the SolidWorks experience, but also I forgot to mention, uh, our mechanic, uh, our, uh, Katia background as well, uh, especially in the automotive industry and aerospace, uh, we do work with solutions like Simulia as well for analysis and uh, have been in the software business for 35 years. So we do have a team that can that can support both on SolidWorks uh, and just Deso products, whether it's SolidWorks, Katia, or the 3D experience, which is a, a cloud-based solution um, for design tools as well and just overall collaboration uh, uh, with your uh, with your company. So. I mean, when it comes to a complete one-stop shop, uh, solid solid experts is uh, is is there to support you with your 3D printing needs and 3D designing needs. And so, if you have further questions or um, want to know more, uh, please feel feel free to reach out to John or myself, and or we can do a benchmark for you. Or if you want to start outsourcing parts to us, we can do that as well, or just simply evaluate solutions like John said. Uh, you can go directly on uh, the MarkForge site, uh, do the uh, Iger, uh, download the Iger software and quantify, but we can work in conjunction with you guys and, and maybe make some directions, because uh, some, uh, some, um, some kind of guidance as well because of the fact that when you are designing your initial part, uh, what's going to be one of the things that's going to stand out the most with 3D printing in metal is the support material and, and where you want to properly position it uh, in order to facilitate um, the post-processing uh, of, of the parts. So that'll be probably one of the things that you'll want to keep in mind when creating your parts. So that's where we're there to kind of guide you through the uh, through the evolution of, uh, of metal 3D printing uh, with the, uh, the Metal X unit. So um, if anybody has any questions in the chat, uh, feel free to, uh, to uh, you know, answer. If not, uh, thank you. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, we, we had the, the one guy ask a question earlier, and Steve asked a question in the chat that I answered him, commenting okay. on uh, my accent and such. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, so he, he was commenting on your very distinguished accent? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're both the old dogs from New England. Yeah. So, and aside from that, and, is there any any other questions, or I think that pretty much uh, summarizes anything. Or is there anything you wanted to add? Or well, to your point that yeah, there are design guides that uh, we can either send or you can get through the Mark Forge website. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you have a good STL or step file, uh, we can certainly look at it in the uh, both the Iger and the SolidWorks for you and, and give you an evaluation. You know. How well part that particular piece uh, might print and what it might cost, um, and and give advice for um, tailoring it to uh, to make it more efficient. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's probably the biggest key is that 
you know, you can get a lot of the information on the Bark Forge, but I think, yeah, sometimes it, it's it's best to go directly through us to kind of uh, get that that initial feel for the 3D printing, for the uh, evaluations, especially when it comes to uh, parts, cost, time, because uh, we want the uh, the final design result to, you know, uh, align with what what is possible with metal 3D printing because it's uh it's not quite exactly like machining a part so there's uh some little nuances that uh we can you know provide uh some guidance on on that and uh get you the uh the optimal part that you need uh to have uh, have success and that's essentially one of the the primary reasons why you want to have a a a, re a reseller like solid experts with that kind of experience to uh to kind of guide you and also uh, support you in, in, in your 3D printing uh, ventures. So that would be uh, probably the, the advice that uh, would be good for the steps. So if anyone feel free to, to reach out and uh, if there's no further questions, uh, John, thank you for your presentation and taking the time today with us. And uh, I wish everyone on the, uh, on the webinar that joined us today a great day and once again feel free to reach out if you have any further questions thank you thanks james